two lives are cut short in a crime with no obvious motive. This is the case of Dylan Ellis and Oliver Martin. Let's step into the cold. They were childhood friends. They attended the same grade school and grew up streets away from each other in the Rosedale neighbourhood of Toronto. They were both 25 when they died, sitting right next to each other. Dylan Ellis was just starting out as a photographer when he lost his life. He had three siblings and was the grandson of Toronto philanthropist Mariano Antonio Elia. Oliver Martin studied for a Bachelor of Commerce degree at Concordia University and had recently passed Level 2 of the Chartered Financial Analyst exam when he was killed. Oliver had three sisters and loved kickboxing and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The earliest minutes of Friday the 13th of June 2008 would be their last moments on earth. The evening of the 12th of June 2008 was a happy one. Both Dylan and Oliver were with friends watching Game 4 of the NBA Finals at a condo belonging to one of their friends, Andrew Gilchrist. The condo was located near the Trinity Bellwoods Park, area of Toronto. Dylan offered to give a ride home to those who needed one. Oliver and Oliver's girlfriend were the only ones who took up Dylan on his offer. Oliver sat in the passenger seat and his girlfriend, whose name is not known, sat in the back. Dylan hadn't been driving his parents' black Range Rover long when he received a call from Andrew on his cell phone. Dylan had headed out to pick up food from a vegetarian restaurant earlier in the evening and when he returned to Andrew's home, he forgot to give back the keys. Dylan didn't mind having to head back to the condo. He was in a good mood, as was Oliver, and the pair kept laughing and joking. As Dylan drove towards the corner of Richmond Street West and Walnut Avenue, Oliver's girlfriend snapped this picture of the two friends. Three minutes later, the men were shot. Dylan pulled up outside the condo at 12.05am on Friday the 13th of June. He called Andrew to let him know they were there. The plan was to wait for Andrew in front of the gate and throw the keys over when he showed up. As they waited for Andrew with the windows of the Range Rover rolled down, a man approached the driver's side window. Dylan looked at the man and asked something along the lines of, How's it going? In response, the man pulled out a gun and shot Dylan in the chest. Then a second shot was fired. Concerned for his girlfriend, Oliver shouted for her to get down, which she did. The shooter then moved to the front of the car and fired once diagonally through the windshield, hitting Oliver. Dylan and Oliver still had their seatbelts on. The man took off into the night. As she was hiding, Oliver's girlfriend, who was 22 at the time, didn't get a good look at the killer. Witnesses saw a black man with a light complexion, wearing a light-coloured shirt and dark-coloured pants, riding a mountain bike away from the scene. He was also captured on security footage taken from nearby buildings, but this lead has never resulted in anything important for the police. Oliver's girlfriend was unharmed and called 911 from the back seat. 
she was unable to leave the vehicle as the doors were locked. Andrew was the one to call both Dylan's and Oliver's families about the incident. But it was already too late for the friends. Dylan and Oliver died soon after arriving at the hospital. Speaking about his stepson's murder, Alan Dudek said, Three hours after chasing down to St Mike's Hospital, I'm sitting in my kitchen writing Oliver's obituary. Detective Sergeant Gary Giroux and Detective Mary Runa are investigating the double murder. There is nothing to suggest that Dylan and Oliver were involved in something illegal and they weren't known to the police. Posters were taped up in subways asking people with information to call Crime Stoppers. Footage of the Range Rover at the intersection of Queen and Bathurst Streets was released by police in December 2008. When the one-year anniversary of the murders rolled around, the police released the photo of Dylan and Oliver in their final moments. An initial reward of $5,000 rose to $50,000 on the one-year anniversary. But the investigation into the murders of Dylan and Oliver remains very cold. Speaking about the lack of a motive, Detective Sergeant Drew said, I have motives in all of my other cases. Significant or insignificant, there was an event. But in this case, I don't have any idea what it is. Theories have been looked into. Investigators don't think the murders were a case of mistaken identity. Firearms testing showed the shooter was 18 to 24 inches away from the car. If the killer had a problem with someone driving a similar car, they would have been close enough to realise that Dylan and Oliver weren't who they were looking for. It has been suggested that a grudge may have been involved. Did the men have an argument with a stranger, or did Dylan cut someone off while driving? Oliver's girlfriend said there weren't any fights, and a visit to a 7-Eleven to buy a Slurpee, a Popsicle and candy earlier in the evening was uneventful. The detectives involved think it's unlikely the murders were a thrill kill, as those murders are rare according to the detectives. A carjacking seems unlikely too, as Detective Runa feels that if the killer wanted the car, they wouldn't have murdered those in the vehicle. Every year on the 13th of June, the families of Dylan and Oliver gather at Ramsden Park for a memorial at a park bench named in their loved one's honour. Oliver's family have called for a ban on handguns and have set up the Oliver Martin Memorial Trust Fund, which helps those living with dyslexia, something that Oliver had to deal with every day. At each anniversary gathering, one of Oliver's sisters brings two sets of ribbons, blue for Dylan and green for Oliver. But it was on the 13th of June 2014, the first Friday the 13th since the murders, that an extra set of ribbons was brought. These ribbons were white, the favourite colour of Dylan and Oliver's friend Andrew Gilchrist. Andrew had died in his sleep of an apparent drug overdose just hours before the memorial began. It was later determined that Andrew died at roughly the same time Dylan and Oliver had, six years earlier. <laughs>